This tutorial is going to cover exporting for the web and a bit about sequence settings. So what we have here is an, a Final Cut profile that's open and I'm going to drag a high definition clip to the timeline. Now you're going to see this window because Final Cut Pro starts with a standard definition sequence. So a 4 by 3 box that looks like this. This is saying this clip does not match the sequence settings or any of your sequence presets. For best performance, your sequence and external video should be set to the format of the clips you are editing. Change the sequence settings to match the clip settings. In this case, we're going to say yes. We want to match our sequence to the high definition clip settings. So I'm going to say yes. So now, instead of a 4 by 3 box that looks like this, it's a 16 by 9 box that looks like this. So if we play through this one, it's just a quick little text file that wiggles back and forth. So what I want to do is get this high definition file and really compress it for the web so that people can easily access it with any kind of web connection. Mobile being very popular right now, um, you'd be able to access this with your iPhone quite simply. So what I'm going to do is nest a sequence and then export using QuickTime conversion. And those are two new vocabulary words and we'll discuss them briefly. So first we will nest a sequence. This first sequence here is called sequence one. In Final Cut you can have multiple sequences. So we're just going to rename this one. This is our high def sequence HD. And we're going to make an, a new sequence file, new sequence, or command n. And they start out as a different sequence name that you can rename. I'm going to call this SD for a standard definition. You have to double click on a sequence to have it open. It'll open it down in the timeline. So what I'm going to do is take the HD sequence, that's this right here, that's been edited on the timeline, and grab it from the browser and drag it into a new sequence called SD. Here's our box again. We're going to say no this time because we want to force the HD sequence to fit in this SD box. So now you'll see that our clip is on our timeline and we have these black bars top and bottom. That's called letterboxing. So now we're forcing our high definition clip to match our sequence which is now an NTSC DV sequence 720 pixels by 480 pixels. So that's what you would see on a standard definition television. And that's what we send over to LDTV because they broadcast in standard definition. Now the last thing we want to do is export this now standard definition box as a much smaller box in compressed format. So we're going to say file export and we're going to use QuickTime conversion. And what we'll do is put it in a folder that the rest of the files for this project is in. I'm going to name it 33311. Uh, and this is called Web Export. And here we're going to change the format to work for an iPhone. And you'll see that the use box gets grayed out. This is going to save our file as an M4V. Now that's a compressed movie format that's easily uploadable to our wiki. And that's how most of our submissions will be made for class. So you're going to be publishing your video files on the wiki page. So lastly, I'll go into Safari and publish this file on the wiki page. So I can start typing wiki lrhsd.org and here's comtech and I'll go over to the student wiki and then I'm going to go into a class period and then my name would be in one of these class period links and I would navigate to it And once I'm on the page, what you would do is click the insert 
quick time movie icon and we're going to browse to our media and then you can navigate to the folder and find your M4V file that we exported from Final Cut Pro. Here we'll say choose and insert. And there's our QuickTime movie. So I'll save it. And now this is easily read on the web so that you could play it from a mobile device and it would play efficiently. And that's going to conclude our tutorial on how to export from Final Cut Pro and get it on the wiki page so that you're publishing your media online.